Hello and welcome back to NorCal 715. Today I have this pure clean robotic vacuum and it is a model PUCR99. Input 15 volts, 600 milliamps from the adapter. Power consumption 20 watts. It has a lithium ion battery, 11.1 volts at 2000 milliamp hour, and the battery is housed under this little yellow compartment right here. Now the problem I'm having is the battery is not charging. I can take the battery out. I can charge it on my little B&K 1601 power supply and it does charge up. It just never charges up when it's in the vacuum. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the power supply right here. So I have the power supply connected. The power is on. So let's just look and see what kind of voltage we get. 15.26 volts on the coaxial power plug of the power adapter. So let's get the demi load out and put some load on it and see what we get. So what I've done is I've connected two of the 12 ohm resistors basically in series. So I have the positive going to this purple lead right here, which comes out of the center of the coaxial conductor. The negative lead, I have an alligator clip and a lead down to this lead right here. So when I turn this on, we'll get 24 ohms, which is about 625 milliamps. So let's turn both of these on and we'll still get 15.02 volts. So I'm gonna say the AC adapter is fine. Can the AC adapter start now with the full load? So power off, power on, 15.02. So I'm gonna say the AC adapter is just fine. That's over the rated limit, 15 volts. We have 625 milliamps between these two resistors. So let's go ahead and get into the vacuum. So now to get to the battery, take out those two screws right there, lift this tab up, there is the battery. So let's look at the voltage of the battery. Oh my God, 0 0.07 volts. Let's unplug the battery and test it out of the circuit. It is absolutely dead to the world. Let's plug the adapter in. Let's measure the voltage now. So I see 13.95 volts. Now 11.2, 9, 8, 13.2. Let's connect the battery and retest it. Battery's connected. 948, 949, does it climb? 950, back to 940. What is going on? So I don't believe the charge controller is located inside the battery on this one. I don't feel anything in here. So it should have a set of MOSFETs and a DW01 charge controller IC to limit the charge of this battery. And so what was going on with this unit is it would park itself and then at my pre-scheduled time, it would take off to start cleaning and it would only clean for about a minute before it started showing the low battery indicator and it would find its home, its docking pod once again, and it would charge for 23 and three quarter hours. And then at my scheduled takeoff time, which was 2 a.m., it would take off and it would run for about a minute or two. Then it would show low battery and go back. And this happened several days in a row. Now this thing had been working perfectly prior to that. And I took the battery out, I connected it to my B&K 1601 power supply, and I charged it up to about 12.3 volts, and it ran fine for about two hours. It went back to the dock, it tried to charge, it never charged again. So I believe something in this, in this robot is keeping the batteries from being charged. So let's tear this thing apart and see what's inside. Maybe we can get to the bottom of this. Let's cut these two little screws up here. They're loose. Let's take the feet off of this unit, the little sweepers. Now we'll take the rest of the screws out. Now, does it simply lift apart at this point? So I got the screws out of the bumper. Let's take the bumper out. Oh my God, I missed a couple. Keyboard's unplugged. Let's unplug these sensors. There's the wheel drive motors, the vacuum fan, and here is the power supply. Let's move this out of the way so we can see what's going on. So this is the battery connector right here. Okay, so I've got the unit open and I see some diodes here. Let's just go ahead and check these diodes. So cathode is the banded bar, anode is the non-banded. That's definitely a problem. 
I should be seeing point six. Yeah, I'm seeing point six now. Now I got good contact. Oh. That's the suspect right there. Good. 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 So I'm looking for about 0.6 volts in the diode range. It actually puts voltage on the probes and you measure the forward voltage of the device. 0.567 volts. That one's not reading good. Interesting. This one is connected directly to the positive battery lead. Let's put this on volts. I'm gonna turn the power on. I'm gonna put my negative on the negative of the battery. The positive on the positive. 9.5. So this diode should have 9.5 on one side. And if it's working correctly, it should have 10.1 on the other side or about six tenths of a volt drop. 14.5. There's almost 5 volts drop across this diode. I'm going to change that diode. Okay, so I have the battery disconnected right here. I'm going to heat up both ends of the diode. Once I get both ends hot at the same time, it should just lift off the board just like that. Just hanging by the molten solder, the wicking effect of the solder. I found a 251D. Now these diodes are good for two and a half amps at 1000 volts forward voltage. So I'm gonna fold both leads over. I'm gonna take my little cutters. I'm just gonna cut them off right here. So we're just gonna take and attach this diode to the pads on the circuit board. So I've got it in my pliers here. And I'm just gonna to try to add some solder to each side of the lead. And we'll tack the other lead back down. Okay, so let's connect the battery back up to it. And we'll measure the static battery voltage. 9.82. Let's turn the power supply on now. It's on, measure the voltage, 982. See if it attempts to charge it. Ooh, there we go, 10.06, 10.07. So we should have theoretically about seven tenths of volt drop across this new diode. 0.77 volts. The battery is still charging, 10.23. It was at 10.1 just a moment ago. So I think that we have a very successful repair on this unit. So I have my probe in amps now. I'm gonna put it on DC amps and we'll measure the current. 660 milliamps is charging the battery at. So let's look at the battery again. I have it on DC volts. 10.4, it is definitely charging. We started at like 9.82, I believe it was. So I'm gonna put this all back together and we'll give it a test run. Okay, so I got it all back together. Let's go ahead and set the clock on it right now. It's actually just after midnight here. So 0.03 is the current time. Now let's set the timer. I normally have this come on at about 2 a.m. So I'm gonna put it on the base, let it charge and we'll check it in just a little bit. All right, so it's been charging now for a couple of hours. It's about 15 seconds until 2 a.m. You can see the timer logo is set. So let's see if it comes on and runs for more than about 30 seconds. There it goes. Now I'm looking at the battery. There's two indicators on the battery right now. Wow, still have two indicators, that's very good. Normally it'd be down to one indicator by now, but it'd be almost dead. There it goes, cleaning the edge board. I think it's all taken care of. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If this video has made a difference, please consider donating on my YouTube homepage with the PayPal donate button or at paypal.me slash norcal715. Thanks for watching. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.